All right, let's get started. We're building a complete application in 15 minutes using open source project datatier.net. You will need SQL Server or SQL Server Express. I'm using Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition because it's free. And hopefully you're familiar with C Sharp and SQL. I'm going to go really fast, so um, this is not a beginner video, but it's not. It's going to be really easy, so just stick with it. We're building a one-table uh, SQL Server database named Password Vault, and we're going to build a Windows Form application. So make sure your Visual Studio can run the, uh, Windows Forms. And as I just mentioned, I'm going to be going extremely fast. So if you need to replay these sections, you can just you know replay it. But if I spend too much time on each section will never get done. So now we're going to go through part one and here's the times for the different tasks we're going to cover in part one. First thing we're going to do is create a new SQL Server database named datatier.net.database. So let's go ahead and do that now. Create a new database. That wasn't too tough so far. All right, now we're going to clone datatier.net. Copy the URL. Open up a new instance of Visual Studio. Takes just a second to download. All right, now we're going to open up the datatier.net solution. We're going to restore the NuGet packages, and now we're going to build. Now, when you download the project, you're going to need to set the client project as your startup project, else you get an error. You cannot run a class library. And now we're going to run datatier.net. So far, I haven't made it too tough yet, I hope. We're going to install the datatier.net database schema. So check this box and then click there where it tells you to click and execute. So hopefully everyone is still following along. I don't think we've done anything too tough so far. We're going to install the project templates into Visual Studio. If you have 2017 also, it'll possibly show you both. Here I need to close Visual Studio because it's running, so I'm going to close it and end these tasks. All right, now we have Visual Studio. The project templates are installed into Visual Studio. And now we have to set up our connection string for datatier.net. So we're going to run datatier.net again. Click on the build connection string. I'm going to type in my server name. And I'm going to use Windows Authentication. I'm going to build my connection string. I'm going to test it. It works. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. And now we're going to click Finished. And we're going to get a message we have to restart Visual Studio because the app.config cannot be uh, modified once the app has started. I found this out just recently. And now we're going to run datatier.net again. And if your connection string is set up properly, you will see test database connection pass just like I did. So congratulations, that is part one. You know how datatier.net set up, and that's a one-time setup. So from now on, you can create your own projects without this step. And now it's part two. We're going to create a data tier, the data tier to use for our project. So we're going to create a new SQL Server database named Password Vault. Haven't lost anybody yet, I hope. 
All right, we're going to create a new table called site. First field is ID, and we're going to make it the primary key. And we're going to change the identity, identity specification to true. We're going to give it a name field and password. And the password's 20 characters. All right, hit save. And we'll call this site. Sorry, I can't type there. Site. Now we're going to create a data tier.net class library, which sort of serves as our data tier. This is from the project template we just installed in the previous part one. And those are the four projects that make up your template. Now we're going to add the manage NuGet packages for solution. And we're going to add datajuggler.net. And we're going to install this to the data access component. And we're going to go ahead and update. You probably don't I think I've updated this by now, so you should get the latest version all at once. But when I made this video, I've done an update since then. All right, so now we have our NuGet package installed. And our project compiles. So now we're going to run datatier.net again, and we're going to create our first project. Now we're going to set the project folder. The project folder is the folder above the four projects that you just created in your template. And this that still says Rad Studio, but I've updated that also. So we're going to go ahead and open up. This is the project we created. We're going to open the file in File Explorer, and that'll give us the project folder because that's the folder above the four projects in our template. And we're going to paste that in. And now we're going to add our database password vault that we just created. I'm going to type in my server name again. And I'm going to refresh my database list and select password vault. I'm just showing you here, if there were many tables here, you, you can exclude any tables or fields you do not want to build before you uh, do your first build, but we're going to go ahead and use everything, all three fields. And now we're going to build with datatier.net. Hit the build all button, and this builds all the files that make up your data tier. And now we must include the projects that were just generated, and we have to update those the Visual Studio project, so we're updating that now. And click the Update Project button. And now we're going to execute the store pr procedures that were just generated when we built our project. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you the, some of the, the insert and so we'll go ahead and execute. Well, if I hit Control Shift R, it fixed that. Sorry, there. Execute. All right. So now we have our data tier created. So now we have completed part one, part two. I mean, excuse me. And now before we start part three, I want to explain this video is not a trap because if it wasn't for NuGet, I would not have been able to make this video in 15 minutes. But I put all the real application work in a NuGet project so that way I can spend our time just using the data tier that we created. 
so we don't have to spend our time building a form and the buttons and all that. So I have all that already working. So all we're going to do now is create a new Windows form project in Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and do that now. Make sure it is the .NET Framework type. And I am going to call this Password Vault. And I'm going to go ahead and create my project. And now this is where the magic takes place. We're going to add the NuGet package for datajuggler.tutorials.passwordvault. And this is going to add about eight of my NuGet packages all in once. Four of them are the, uh, the same data tier that we just created. But I had, it, I had to add that to it with the NuGet package so that everything compiles from NuGet. So in case someone doesn't follow along from the tutorial. And we're going to add a new solutions folder here called data. And we're going to add the four projects that were in our, that were created from our template. So I'm going to browse for password vault and the, here's the uh, four projects. I'm going to add the application logic component, the data access component, the data gateway, and then finally the object library. I'm also going to remove these four that came from NuGet because we want to use the ones that we created to sh prove to you that we're not using any uh, trickery. We're actually using the ones that we just built. So we're going to put a reference to the data gateway and the object library. The other two gets picked up by those two, so they're already referenced. And now we're going to build our project. And now we're going to modify program.csharp. And this is where another thing that I learned how to do over the weekend. And in here, instead of running the form one that was created with this project, we're going to create a new application context. And we're going to create a new main form. The main form is part of the NuGet package that we just installed. And instead of running the form one, we're going to run the application context. All right, and finally we have to set our connection string and datatier.net in the tools folder comes with a pretty neat project called Construct Connection String Builder. So we're gonna go ahead and run Connection String Builder. And again, I'm going to type in my server name. It's been on my list to update this to read the server name from a config file, but I haven't done it yet. And give it the name password vault. And we're going to use Windows Authentication, build our connection string, everything tests and copied. Now we're going to go back over to password vault in the app.config file. We're going to add an app settings section. And here we're going to add a key for connection string. And we're going to paste in the value that we just copied to our clipboard. Now there's one more thing we need to do. I didn't want to publish NuGet packages with names like Data Gateway and Object Library. So I changed the names to the ones you have here. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Because otherwise, the, uh, the NuGet packages are looking for those particular namespaces. So, got them here copied to my clipboard. And I'll change them the assembly information. I think that's for only for human readables, but not sure. So, I did it in both. And we'll do the object library. We'll do the same thing. Let me go over here, copy this to my clipboard, and paste that in. And for anyone lazy that didn't follow along, you don't have to do this if you want to just use the NuGet packages. All you have to set is the connection string, actually. And now we're going to run the app and I get a drum roll. All 
All right, our app started all these four. I've already created these sites earlier, but now we're going to create a new site just to show you it works. And I'll type in a password here. As soon as you get to eight characters, the little copy button shows up. And then now I'm going to edit it just to show you the edit functionality works. And finally, I'll show you a delete. I didn't even bother adding a confirmation for the delete, but that's all I'm going to show for this video. If you, um, you know, I, I think this was a pretty quick video. For 15 minutes, we built an entire application. Now, NuGet did all the work, actually, but this is the end. If you want to view the actual code of how the NuGet package works, that'll show you how the calls to save and everything works. So I can show those in some future videos if you want. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.